Hi there, how are you? Today, we're gonna to talk about in this live broadcast, uh, a big, huge dilemma that a lot of service providers have. And the question is, who should you work with? Big question, who should you work with? Uh, it's a really super big dilemma, especially with those people who are in the coaching business, the training business, or do alternative kinds of treatments. Uh, it's really hard to decide who should you work with. It's a big question. And why is it such a big question? Why is it such a big dilemma? Because in theory, you can help everybody. And everybody really needs your help. I'm Indy Stern from Successful Self-Employed Superwomen, and I am here to tell you that there is a way that you can make this decision super easy, really super easy. But first, I want to explain to you what the problem is. Because a service provider can really help everybody, really, really uh, can help everybody, a lot of times they come with an attitude that they don't want to limit their potential. They don't want to limit the potential reach. They really want to help. They come from a place of giving. They really want to help as many people as possible. And it doesn't really matter where these people are and what they're doing. Um, so what happens is because they can help everybody, they don't have a very clear direction and don't know really exactly how to explain what it is they do. Or that when they do explain the benefits of their service, uh, usually the other person on the other side doesn't really get it or doesn't think that they have a problem that you can solve. Because those of us who are in the personal development business, we know that most people are unaware of how low their energy is and how stressed they become and how much better their lives can be. They just don't get it. And we, being enlightened, being in the personal development business, being in the treatment business, knowing that we can actually help people to change their lives and we want so much to do that, we know it can happen but they don't know what can happen, which can cause a re really big problem. So um, I had even a discussion this morning. I had a discussion with a colleague of mine from Italy, and she told me that she's having a really hard time attracting the right type of clients. The people that were coming to her really were not the people that she I, ideally would like to work with. And she said that the women that she wants to work with, they don't really want her help. They don't know. They're unaware. They don't know that they have any problems. They, even when it's obvious to all the world around them that they're struggling and they're not satisfied and they're unhappy, they still don't, uh, they don't see it on themselves and they're actually not willing to take any steps towards changing that. So what happened with my colleague this morning is that she said that maybe she should choose a, a different target market or maybe she should change the subject that she was really interested in doing so that would be easier for her to get clients, or at least she'd be able to explain to herself, you know, how, how she's going to help the clients that were turning to her, because the clients that she wanted to work with were not turning to hers. And she started blaming herself for being unclear, for not really having the direction, for not really knowing what she wants to do and who she wants to work with. Uh, so I looked, I looked at her, we were on Skype, yeah? I looked at her and I said, point blank, Okay, so tell me, who do you want to work with? And she described her ideal client in detail, precisely. It was absolute. She had no confusion whatsoever on who she wanted to work with. So, okay. So, the, you know that, the, where, the, where does the confusion come from then? Because you know, she was saying, well, maybe I'll do this and maybe I'll do that. But there was absolutely no ambiguity whatsoever. So the confusion doesn't really come with who you should work with, because uh, you probably know who you want to work with. That is generally clear. The confusion comes when you start to think that you have to compromise or change who you want to work with in order to get more clients. I think it's as simple as that. So when you ask the question, or when someone asks me the question, okay, Mindy. So who should I work with? My answer will always be 10 out of 10 times, 100 out of 100 times, 1,000 out of 1,000 times. You should work with the people that you really want to work with. That's it. 
Work with the people that you are driven to help, that comes from here, that you want to, that you know you have so much to offer them, that you know that you can change their lives, but not from a place of, okay, is it irrational, is it logical, is it easy, uh, will they want it, can they pay for me? That's all here. Push that away. You want to come from here. Who do you really want to help? Who are you driven to help? That it's your mission to help. Okay. And there's a process that we can go through, maybe in another discussion, I'll talk about it to really know who it is that you want to help if you don't know. But generally, most times, eight out of 10 times, the idea of who you want to help is clear. Just you, the thought that you might have to compromise that in order to sell more, that's when it becomes kind of confusing. So now that the, the question comes, instead of who do you want to work with, the question should become, how do I attract a lot of the people that I want to work with? <laughs> that is the question, not who, but how do I get them? Because you already know who it is. And here I'm going to give you four, four uh, concepts that will help you in knowing how you can actually attract a lot of the people that you already know that you want to work with, okay? The first is, da -dun -da -dun. know your why, okay? So you decided who you want to work with. Um, I'll give you some examples. Um, who I want to work with, okay? I want to work with self-employed women who are ambitious, who are driven to help a lot of people and who are driven to success and really want to know the steps that they need to take. They're doers. That's the type of woman I'm, I'm they're doers. They want to do things. Uh, another thing that's important to me, the people I work with, that they have high values, that they have family values, that it's not only work that's important to them, but also their private lives, their home life, their kids, their spouses, uh, that they have a balance, that they want. They probably don't have one yet because that's one of the things I help them with, but they want a balance, a good balance between their regular life and work or integrate both of them together, both on a high priority. That's the person I want to work with. The woman that I was speaking to this morning, my colleague, she wants to work with women who are, um, she wants to work with divorced mothers who are also in their own business and are looking for, uh, for getting more confidence. That's the people that she wants to work with. She wants to work with women who really have an issue with confidence and want to gain more confidence. Another colleague of mine that I was speaking to a few weeks ago, we were talking, and she's, uh, she wants to work with professional people who feel stressed. That they're professionals, they have work, they are business, they, you know, suit and tie and go out there and are very aggressive and feel very stressed. And that's who she wants to work with. So the question is, once you know who it is, know why you want to work with them. Well, I'll tell you about me. I want to work with women who are self-employed and ambitious and have a very strong work life or want a very strong work-life balance that their children and their families are pretty much their top priority and their work is to support their family, et cetera. I want that because that is my life. That is what I struggled to create. <laughs> that is what I wanted and had to learn on my own through a lot of trial and tribulation to be able to create a life that I have the work that I love and that gives me a lot of time to be with my family who I am very, uh, very interested in spending as much time as possible with them. So I have a very good balance between my, my wonderful uh, business and my family. And I, I don't feel like I'm compromised at any stage. So for me, it took me a long time to get to the point where I can do that. And I want to help women shortcut it. You know, I want to help women create businesses that they love, that they can work with the people that they want to work with, that their work supports them, where they can grow in their work and still not be a slave to their work, still have a lot of time. Uh, and quality time and priority given to their families because I know how to do it now. So I want to help them get to that place really quickly. Uh, and I think that most people, coaches, therapists, trainers, teachers that really have this mission to help, 
um, and know who their market is, most of the time is because of a personal experience that they went through on their own. And they want to actually give back, help other people get to where they have gotten, maybe with trials and tribulations like I had, uh, but, th but to get there. Like a lot of people, if you're into health or you have uh, um, dietary issues, people have gone through that. Once they found the trick, the way to make it uh, better or happier or have a good life along with whatever the circumstances were, then uh, then you want to give back. So you should really know why it's important, why it's important. I have another client that I'm working with that she really wants to help um, adults who suffered trauma in their early childhood years. And that trauma is actually dictating their relationships now as adults. And that's her focus because she had suffered trauma as a child. And she wants to help people get over that because she knows after her learning how to do it, she knows how to do it now. And she can shortcut people's lives, let them get to a better life much quicker, much easier than it than she, than it was for her. Okay? So that's you know your why. Once you know your why, and if your why is strong and it's coming from, from your heart, then there's no more confusion. You won't you won't be able to say anymore, well, maybe I should compromise and maybe I should work with someone else and let the head start working again on the rationalization of why you should change who your target market is. Okay, so you know your why will give you the confidence and the power and the energy to stay firm in your conviction that that's who you want to work with and that there can be no other choice. There can be no other choice. The next thing you want to do is you want to know their pain. Know their pain. And I'm talking about their being the client, the people that you want to work with. They have issues. They have things that are happening in their lives that they want to change, that they want to make better. Now, one of the points that I raised earlier was that uh, a lot of the times the coaches say, including this colleague I was talking to this morning, that the people that I want to help, they don't know that they need my help or they're not willing to put in an effort to change. Now, what I will say to you is that um, most people don't want to change. Changing is hard work. You know, people might know that their life is not really great or ideal or could be better, but they really think that to change will, uh, will be hard work or they have a fear of what will happen after they change. People like to stay inside their comfort zones. So it could be that you have a lot to offer. But what you're what you're offering, the big picture out there, the personal development goal that you can actually give them, the change in their life that you want to give them might be too big for them to comprehend, to get it. OK, so what I would suggest you do is think about what's bothering them on an everyday on an everyday basis. What are the small issues that are bothering them that they want to change? Not the big life changing issues that you know will happen after you start to work with them but think about the small things that are are uh, are difficult for them that are that are bothering them that they are willing they're small enough and bothersome enough that they're actually willing to invest time and energy to change it so you don't have to think i'm a big thing a wonderful life that you can give them because that might be too big for them too big a move too big a commitment too scary so they really don't know what's going to happen if they change so much all of their lives. But if you can give them um, some uh, an opportunity to relieve something small, manageable, that will actually really make a change in their life, then they will be more apt to, to work with you, to take on your product or to work with you, whatever you're doing. And then while you are working with them, you can add all the other things, all the other methodologies and tools and concepts that you know in order to help them reach that really that bigger picture that they want to get. But get help them get their foot in the door. You don't need to think about such a big things. Think about daily issues, weekly issues, those pain in the ass little things that keep happening that your ideal client really wants to get rid of. So I'll give you for an example. The colleague that I was talking with you about that she wants to work with uh, professional women 
professional people who have a lot of stress in their lives to help them re reduce their stress. She is actually a doctor. She's a psych uh, psychiatrist and a coach. And she is very involved in health, you know, diet, exercise. She really believes, knowingly so, that when you invest in your diet, your eating, uh, do your exercise, also mindset meditation, that you will actually change your life and that will that will reduce your stress. So what she's talking about to her clients, to our dear clients, she says, okay, let's reduce your stress. But once they come to her, they get the whole picture because now she'll work with them to reduce their stress. She'll work with them on mindset and she'll work with them on her their health, on their diet, on their exercising, on maybe meditation, all sorts of tools that she knows are important for them. Maybe they don't know now, but they will know once they start working with her with the concept to reduce their stress. OK, so you have to know the little things that are bothering them. Another concept I want to talk to you about is what I learned from a man called a man named Dan Kennedy, who is, uh, I think, a marketing genius, marketing guru, copywriting genius. He's just uh, I learned a lot from him. And I've been in his programs for quite a, quite a lot of years, maybe seven years now. He has something called MMM. OK, these are the three concepts of uh, of marketing, the most important concepts of marketing. The first M, the first M is market. Who are you marketing to? OK, now we've defined that. Who do you want to sell to? We've said that already and we know why you want to sell to them as well. And you know what their pain is. The next M is message okay so if you know their pain then you can create a message that speaks to them reduce their their stress make more money have work-life balance get more confidence those are the messages you want to put out there to the people that you want to work with um, to attract them okay if you talk again if you talk about the big scale I want to give you a better life, more values in your life. It's very hard to relate to that on an everyday basis when you're busy and life is happening. Um, so narrow it down. The message should be uh, based on you know what the pain is, how you are going to fix the pain, the little issues, the mundane things that are going on. Speak about their life. The message is so important. You want to be very, very exact in your message. And and the more, the better you know your ideal client what what their pain is why you're working with them where they want to go what their objectives are then you can create a message that is so clear to them it's not ambiguous anymore it's not confusing when you know who your market is and someone asks you what you do you can explain really directly and very clearly what it is you do and what's the benefit for those people that you want to work with. It's no longer, you know, I can help the whole world. It's I, I can help these women who are, you know, divorced single parents. I can help them gain that confidence. Maybe divorced single parents that were in an abusive relationship, how they can gain more confidence and become more independent, maybe create their own businesses. So you have to work on the message that it speaks to the heart. Of the person that you want to work with don't change the person you want to work with just make sure your message speaks to their heart and the third M they're the market message and the third M is media okay media is where do these people hang out where will they see your message will they see it uh, in a book on Amazon will they see it on the advertising in Facebook Will they see it in uh, newspaper articles? Will they see it in newspaper magazine advertisements? Will they see it at their local, uh, at a flyer at a local grocery store? Where are they going to see their message? And you want to put your message in places where your ideal client is hanging out, where they go frequently, where they look frequently. You don't want, if, you're, if your client is uh, doesn't know anything about computers, and doesn't go onto computers, then Facebook and Google would not be a good place to be putting your message out because they're not computer friendly. But maybe the mail would be a good place, or maybe they read certain magazines, or maybe they go to a certain types of restaurants or spas or clinics or whatever. Find out 
where your client, ideal client is hanging out, and then put your message in a media that they have access to a lot. So that's the, actually, the, it's a triangle. That's the foundation for good marketing is message, uh, market, message, and media. And now, the fourth thing I want to discuss to help you attract a lot of the people that you want to work with is a concept of that selling is serving. Okay, I work a lot uh, with teams and I work a lot on selling because selling is uh, selling equals income. That's just basically it. Selling equals income. If you do not know how to sell, it's hard to generate income. And if there's a business that's not generated out of income, then there's probably an issue with sales. Either you don't want to sell or your team doesn't want to sell. Um, sales equals income. So I want you to know that selling equals serving. When you're selling, you are not trying to work on somebody. You're not trying to pull the wool over somebody's eyes. What you're actually trying to do is you're trying to help them. You know, you're trying to serve them. You're trying to find a way uh, of helping them. Now, if you cannot help them, then you shouldn't be selling to them. You should be selling to people that you can actually help. Okay? Because if it's someone you can't help, then you are pulling the wool over their eyes. But when you are talking to your ideal client, you sent the messages out, they've responded to you, you have a discussion with them, whether it's a virtual discussion or a telephone discussion or a meeting discussion, find out what they want, how you can serve them. In truth, you know, hand on your heart, how can you serve them? And if there is a way that you can serve them, I believe that you have a moral responsibility to do so. Because you know something, you have a technique, you have a methodology that that person does not know. And that person's life is not 100% because they don't know how to do that. And that person, they can go from, from where they are today to being their ideal lifestyle just by virtue of them finding out the secrets that you already know. So if, if you are like me and you believe that you have an impact and you can make the world a better place, then you actually have an obligation to help those people that you can help. And uh, the, and maybe I should put this as another, another sign here, but when you give value to somebody, the world has to be always in exchange, okay? It flows out, has to come back. So when you're giving value to somebody, okay, you should be getting value back. So when you give the value of your knowledge and your expertise, you should be getting back the value of uh, money. You know, someone should pay you accordingly for your services. So if you're giving a high value, you should be getting a large amount of money back, back coming to you because you want to be in exchange always. You want to also, that's also the fun, one of the philosophies of abundance, to be you put out and get back. You give and take. So it has to come that way also. So sell, serve people, help people, make the world a better place. And by virtue of you helping people who you can help, then you can increase your income. And when you help people well, then people start talking about it, what a great service you did for them, then they're going to recommend you also to their clients and their friends and their family. And the word travels on and on and you become an authority. So stick to working with the people that you know that you want to work with. Okay, do not compromise your value, your goal, your ideas, because it might be easier to get clients uh, a different way. It'll be easiest to get clients if you focus on the people that you really wanna work with. You'll be more satisfied, you'll be happier, a higher energy will come out. Um, the work that you'll do will be better work because it won't be work at all, it'll be pleasure. You'll be doing it really with motivation and mission. So work with the people that you want to work, just once you know who you wanna work with, Know your why. Uh, know their pain. Work on the, the real marketing model, which is marketing, message, uh, media. And then know that selling is serving. Just help a lot of people. Serve a lot of people. And earn a lot of income while you're doing it.
So this is Mindy Stern from Successful Self-Employed Superwomen. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed today's training. I did very much. I thank you so much for coming. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down below. If there are any other subjects that you'd like me to discuss also, write it down below in the questions. And if you got value out of this presentation, out of this training, please share it with your friends. Again, I'm Mindy Stern from Successful Self-Employed Superwomen, and I am dedicated to your personal, your financial, and your business empowerment. Have a great day.